Okay, this video is courtesy of uh, Palalopi, uh, who um, was asking the question about how to save player preferences. So they, they use player preferences to keep the value string for the next scene, and they put the value in the caption text drop down list, but unfortunately, it never gets checked. So I wrote a little script, and all of that is described after the fade. So in the middle of this, uh, um, UI component, I have uh, this drop down list, and you see that it's got a check mark against whatever one has been chosen. Now, when you're writing a preferences uh, or you know, a player configuration, that kind of thing, you want to be able to remember that. So, uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to write a script that attaches a listener to this. Now, there's various ways to do it, I'm going to do it programmatically. You could um, do it as um, you know, attach a um, you know, expose a public method, all that kind of stuff. I'm going to do it uh, this particular way, just to sort of mix it up a little bit. So I'm going to create a, a C sharp script here. And I'm just going to call it save um, drop down um, drop down value. So I'll call it save drop down value, and I'm going to double click that to start Visual Studio. And so now I have my save drop down value. Um, I'm not going to need an update because we're, it's a UI component, it's all done using uh, events. But I do need to know the drop down that I'm going to be attached to. So I'm going to say public, uh, sorry, uh, private drop down, um, drop down. And I need to have a public string preference name. Uh, actually, let's make that a, a constant up here. So let's do const string pref name equals option value. And we also need to add uh, using unity engine dot UI. So we want to have a UI component in here as well because we need access to our dropdown. And we need avoid awake as well. And finally, the last thing we need is a require component type of drop down because this is going to be placed on a drop down. Now, this part here, you can decide how you serialize your uh, data to um, your file or database or whatever it is. Uh, this is just to show you how you can save and recover that value. That's the, the purpose of this. this uh, this video here. So uh, inside the awake, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to grab that drop down component. In fact, we don't really need to have that as a private, we can just have it as a, a local uh, variable here because we don't really need it. Uh, otherwise, uh, no, we do need it. Sorry, we do need it because uh, we need it down here. So uh, we do need it inside the start. So I'm going to do drop down equals get component drop down. And that gets that. And then um, we can attach the listener at this point. So this only ever happens during the awake. So it only ever happens once, uh, once during the object's composition uh, or creation rather, not composition. Um, so we can do drop down. Uh, and then we have on value changed is the the event and we want to add a listener now the listener is of type unity action int so we can do um, new unity action int and then we specify what the value is going to be so there's going to be this index value um, but We've got an issue here because unity action doesn't actually exist inside any of the namespaces we have, so let's bring that in here. So uh, what this constructor takes is it takes <clears throat> excuse me, uh, it takes a a function that expects to receive an integer uh, but returns nothing. So what we can do is we can we can create a function in here. So like void start, for example, doesn't take any parameters and doesn't return anything. We could change that to an end or whatever. Uh, 
But what we're going to do is we're going to put it in line. So that means we're going to have an anonymous function here. Now, we don't need to uh, then all the code is in one place. That's the nice thing about doing this. So our target is going to be an anonymous function, um, which is an, an action, basically. Uh, just a plain .NET action. So it's going to take in an integer, which is an index. And then we use this arrow to indicate what we want to get uh, performed when this happens, the action that it gets performed. And you can see that now this actually compiles. So although it looks kind of weird, uh, we're taking this unity action, it takes in a constructor that expects a, uh, an action, so we're passing in an action, and then what we want to do is we want to save that to the preferences file. So we can do player prefs dot set int pref name and then the value. So what's the value of the drop down list? Well, the value of the drop down list is called value. That's the current index value of that. And then just uh, to make sure uh, that everything gets saved. We're going to save out those player prefs. Now, depending on the platform, this is going to cause a bit of slowdown in your game. So maybe you don't want to do save just now. Maybe you want to do that once you close your dialogue. I, again, totally up to, to you when you want that save to occur. So you might not want to do that at that point. And that's it. So we get our component and then we add a listener to that drop down component. Now, the next part uh, and this is the sort of crucial part. So that's the bit that does the save. Uh, so we have our drop down value that gets saved to whatever that preference name is there. In the start, what we want to do is we want to read that value back. So when we load the, the application again, the correct value is displayed. So if we choose option B, then option B gets displayed when we load the value back in. So the way we do that is we say uh, drop down dot value equals player prefs dot get int pref name and we can leave it at that or we can put in a default value so maybe that your default value is something other than zero but we'll, we'll put in uh, a default value in there and that's it it's what 26 lines of code or something uh, that's all that we need to do to get this to work uh, and now when we go back over to here uh, we go to our drop down and you see that we have our drop down uh, script on here because it's just a, a basic drop down. We drag that in here to our save drop down value script. And then when we run this, uh, nothing major has happened. It's just that when we choose option B, so option B has now been saved. When we reload the game, uh, we now have option B is the, the one that's been selected. And similarly, we choose option C and then we reload it. Then once it reloads, option C is, is there and so on. So that's it. That's how to save a drop down value to player preferences in one script. Hi guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you liked this video, thumbs up. If you didn't like it, thumbs down. I've got plenty of other videos for you to see. Um, if you click around in the, the page, I'm sure you'll find something that, that interests you. Um, but yeah, thank you. Thank you again for watching. I do appreciate your, your uh, viewership uh, of the channel. And um, if you haven't already, please subscribe somewhere up here. And uh, yeah, uh, have a great day. Enjoy yourselves, keep coding, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.